what's up, my name? Welcome back to a new quick win, and today we're focusing on video capturing and specifically video capturing inside progressive web applications. Because this is slightly a uh, challenging topic, I tried this um, for both a native application, a website, a progressive web app, and it seems like there are different ways to do this. There is actually a web API that we can use. <clears throat> Um, inside our progressive web app, but that won't work inside the native application. So for today, we will only focus on that uh, web part of our application. To get started, I created a blank new application using Capacitor um, and also generated a service because we also want to keep track of videos captured in our application. Um, we will use a web API and therefore we need to install a typing for the DOM media capture record or that's the name of the pack uh, package because otherwise um, Visual Studio Code won't pick up the real typings. Then in the end we will also display the uh, video inside a video player and therefore I picked the capacitor video player since we want to try to make this as cross-platform as possible. <laughs> And of course, if you want to try it as a progressive web app, simply add the Angular schematics for progressive web apps. And then I also launched my Ionic application. Um, yeah, there we go. <clears throat> Sorry, early morning. Um, here's my application on the device because it always breaks my computer if I use the video capturing uh, next to the video capturing. Anyway. I had to do a little change to my um, tsconfig app.json and especially here inside the types array. I had to add the DOM media capture record in here as well, otherwise the typings weren't picked up correctly. Um, most likely that's the same for you. So simply apply that change and then we can head on to our code. Um, maybe we get started within the home page. So the idea is uh, to record a video using the Web Media Capture API. And therefore, let's first of all create a media recorder of the type any. Um, we will also have a video player from our capacitor plugin. Actually, we will not really use the native platforms. As I said, um, this procedure will only work inside the progressive web app. Then we should also keep track uh, of our recording state and we will also have an array of videos. Um, while we're here, maybe we could also already inject our video service. It won't have any functionality at this point, but it's nice to have it <laughs> anyway. So. Um, maybe we start with outlining our functions. We definitely need a function to record a video. Um, we also definitely need a function to uh, stop recording. And finally, we also need a function to play a video somehow. So this is our outline and the idea for the tutorial. Now to record a video, in, we can get started by creating a stream and therefore we will now use the navigator dot uh, media devices dot get user media this is really like the most or one of the most important parts it's actually getting the camera stream and you can now specify a lot of things in here uh, inside the get user media for the media stream constraints uh, we just want to say video please use the facing mode actually I got nice typings for this package now uh, and yeah true I meant audio true so we will capture video and audio with this stream right now this actually won't do a lot it might ask the user for permission on a device um, but that's basically all now we need to um, assign this stream to an object within our view so let's for a second turn to our home page view uh, let's quickly also change the header area a bit remove the dummy content and then we're gonna add a nice little video tag we'll give it the class video so um, in my testing yeah get rid of all the dummy stuff I had to explicitly set the width um, I think also for iOS the hate but um, play around with those values for the video element this is not really uh, playing a video well 
yeah, it kinda is, but it's more meant to show the stream of video that we're capturing. We give it an ID template reference so we can use it as a view child. Um, we add auto play plays in line muted. I think that was need needed for iOS, uh, for Safari. And also we will hide it while we are not recording. So once we got this element, and I will also close the styling, we know that we can access it as a view child. So view child video, um, what did I call this before? I think capture element and that's an element reference. Um, now we also need uh, access to the underlying element, uh, which is the native element in capture element. So we use capture element, native element source object because it's actually an HTML video tag. Um, and set this to our stream. Now, um, maybe we can also quickly add a little button already. Um, I also had a bit of logic for our buttons so we can toggle it around. So a little ion fab at the bottom and on click, I will directly in here use the is recording. It's a tiny bit dirty, but also quite nice. So if we are recording, we will call the stop record function. Otherwise we will call the record video function. And also for the icon name, uh, same logic in here. So with that in place, um, is there somewhere my iOS device available here from reflector? Uh, no. So let me connect this uh, on the side once again. Uh, of course, it's not working right now. Uh, we already see inside our application, it should look somewhat like this. And on a device, actually it looks the same. So I can close this again. Um, when I try to capture a video, it might ask for permission already. No, not really, since we're not doing a lot with the stream yet. Um, but the page is working fine so far. Uh, you can also do the same if you want to deploy it to your device uh, or just take a look at it in the browser. That should work for you just fine. So now uh, we step into the capturing part. We just have a stream. We're not doing anything with the stream at this point. But we can now define our options uh, for the recording and we need to set the MIME type to uh, video webm. I think actually iOS uh, has different ideas about <laughs> the options and I uh, will uh, in the end just use MP4, but uh, we do our best from our side, right? So now we step into the Meteor Recorder, which is the tricky part here. We pass in the stream and our options and now the recording can start. Um, it's a bit tricky, as I said in the beginning, uh, because we need a slightly different logic to capture the information. And that means we need to add a new function to the media record on data. Oh, come on, no, no code completion for that part. Mm, maybe if I say media recorder, hmm, hmm. Uh, yeah, on data available. There we go. So we set this to a function, which means whenever new data is available from our, from our stream, we can add this and we can simply check if the event contains data and then push the data to our chunks. In the end, um, maybe we'll also directly do this. Uh, in the end simply means on, on, uh, on stop, I think. Um, in the end, we can use the chunks of our array to create a nice little blob. So chunks type video and this will just work in general fine. Next step would be to store the video and then to reload the list of videos. But of course we don't have that functionality implemented yet. So let's uh, quickly also move to stop record. In the stop record case, uh, we just need to make sure that we stop the recorder, which will then trigger the on stop uh, and reset everything to null and to false. And I should set this to true at some point, huh? Maybe just here, should be fine. Um, because, um, come on, where's my device again? What's wrong with your reflector? Okay, there we go. Um, am I allowed to capture a video by now? Hmm, no, I'm not. 
Okay. I don't like you too. Preview. Okay. 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 So let's just do it in here. I know I will break my camera, but let's do this. Record video is not a function. Yep. Maybe I should just <laughs> restart my uh, live reload. Um, but I already see that for some reason uh, we might see a TypeScript error at this point, but let's just give it a try. So we in general got the logic in place for capturing videos. Uh, now we just need to store them and then play them as well. To store them, let's also in the background already open our video service. And I'm actually curious to see if it works or not, but we will see this in a second. So we will um, use both the uh, file system from Capacitor as well as the Capacitor storage. Within Capacitor storage, uh, we will just store the general path to a file. And within my device, can I do it now? Yeah, I, I just don't like you. Anyway, then just do whatever. Um, or I think, did I use? Yeah, I use record video. I did everything right. It's not my fault. Let's try. Is not a video. What is wrong with you? Did I really add a record video is not a function? Uh, let's quickly check it out. Record. Yeah, maybe if I fix my typos, uh, the things I create might actually work. So. Can we just do this? Okay, this web review still hates me, but this one, you're my friend, right? Or do I have another typo? No, there we go, camera. Yeah, and a lot of echo. All right, so we've seen it works in general. I think it won't work on the device right here because uh, it is not served from a secure URL and for a progressive web app, you also need to serve it from uh, HTTPS and therefore uh, iOS complaints or Safari won't allow access to the camera. But we've seen the camera access. We're able to create a blob. So let's quickly move into our video service because we need a few functions in here. Um, first of all, we should add a little array where we keep track of our videos and a key which will be used in combination with the storage. So once again, uh, we will store the video files inside the file system and we will store a reference to them inside the capacitor storage. That works pretty nice. So let's try and start or maybe we should just do the first function right here. To load all the videos, we just get the information from the capacitor storage using our key and then we assign them to our local array uh, by parsing the value. So you need to really get the value of that result here. Um, that's just the way the capacitor storage works. And if there's no value, a very important fallback to use an empty array. I really encountered a lot of problems with this in the past. So second function of our service should be store, bl uh, store video with a blob file. Now, the easiest part is to create a new name for that file. Just use the date or whatever you want. Then I also found a little helper function to convert a blob to base64 because the problem is if we want to write to the file system using capacitor, there's currently only the way, uh, only a way to use a base64 string. There's actually a community plugin to also write a blob directly, but for now we will use it like this. So you can easily save the file now by using file system um, write file. Let's move this to the top. Um, and then for the options, the path is actually the new file name. The data is of course our uh, blob. And then we just need the directory, which um, is up to you, but I would recommend file system directory data. That's usually fine for both iOS and Android. Then we can also uh, unshift our array means we add an element to the start of our array. And now we will only add the URI to the array. So um, my array now is this.videos. This means we really only got the information to the past uh, inside that array and then we write the new array 
um, by using JSON stringify. Once again, capacitor storage is a tiny bit different than ionic storage. We got the key and value, of course, as well, but we need to stringify our array. We can't just put the plain array into it. So that's our store video function. And while we're here, let's also add the get video URL because if we want to play a video, uh, let's imagine we have a list. Um, we have an ion list and we have items and on click. What is this word? Uh, on click, we want to play the video. And that video simply has a path like uh, data, whatever, one, two, three, four, five, MP4. And the capacitor video player actually expects either a um, URL to a real file. So we would have to transform this somehow, um, or you can also just pass in base64 data. And to do so, simply add a function which will use the path that we got to the file. As I said, the path might be something like data, whatever, uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, and to read a file, we once again use the directory. The directory path actually is usually the data part in front of it. And so we only use the substring after the last um, slash um, to get the real file. So that would give us this value and I'll do I don't know, a lot of jumping, but you can imagine this would resolve to perhaps data and this would resolve to uh, 123.mp4. And then Capacitor will read that file and to uh, return it as a correct base64 string, we also need to add this information up front and then the data of the file. And then we're completely fine. You won't really notice um, a lot of performance issues I think the capacitor um, video player has a functionality to play a internal file, but so far for the progressive web app, I haven't found a way to make this really work. Speaking of the video player, we haven't really uh, used it so far. So let me add a few imports for capacitor and then the capacitor video player. In fact, we don't really need this second way since we're not deploying it as a native application right now. Um, but we, of course, need the first way for the web implementation of that package. Uh, also, we need to add uh, implements after view in it because uh, on that package, there's a little explanation that if capacitor is running on a native device, we use the real plugin and otherwise we use this uh, slightly fallback plugin. And also um, we could do this in the constructor as well. I just wanted to put it in here. Uh, we load the videos from our service, which will fill our video array. Now we just need to change it. We added already the to do's in our uh, on stop event. So in here, let's call our video service, uh, this dot video service store videos, and then we can reload our list of videos. In fact, um, I noticed that the view isn't updating in this block. So if you encounter problems like this, that for some reason the view isn't updating, simply add the change detector in here, uh, change detector ref, and then call it like this. So back to our list, this dot change detector, detect changes, and then all changes to uh, your items will be reflected in the view as well. So finally, we're gonna play our video. And here we can use the real URL by getting it from our service. But it's actually not a real URL, it's actually the base64 data, I would call it. And then we can use the video player. So I copied this part from the video player. Um, the only thing you need to take care of is um, we need a player, which is actually a div element in our view. It wasn't really explained very good on that package. Um, so what you need in the view is a div with the ID full screen. They also had the slot fixed. Not sure if it uh, if it's necessary. Um, where was I? And also the component tag is important. So in my case, it's inside the home page. As you can see at component selector at home. If you're using it in a different page, make sure you use your own component. 
uh, tag in here. And also, if you don't use full screen, then call it something else. But I think we need this video tag. Now we got most of the stuff in place. We only need a little list for our videos, which we can quickly add. So this was my dummy explanation list. Now this is the real list. Let video of videos and click play video. So I actually captured a few videos up front and because this is kind of boring, I will also show you the whole stuff within the progressive web app that I deployed up front. Uh, you can also find it linked in the quick win academy support.web.app slash home. And this is now a great example of screen mirroring, mirroring not working all the time on my device. Um, I really want to try and not use my Mac capturing. Uh, so there we go. That's our progressive web app. Let's hope it works. I uh, would like to access camera. Hello darkness, my old friend. And there we go. It was captured. It was added in here to our list and on click I can play it. It's actually uh, on the side because uh, for uh, yeah and because I have airplay um, it's kind of completely messed up. But normally you could now see the video in here. Um, can I also close it? Yeah, there we go. And here we are back inside our list. So that means even on iOS inside a progressive web app, we can now play our videos. But um, I also had to add a little fix here uh, and as well to Safari on the Mac. So if you're on a Mac and want to test this in Safari, you need to go to the top menu, develop experimental features, and then enable the media recorder. This is an open issue or actually I think at the time recording it's actually implemented, but I'm not sure why it's not in my uh, Safari. So this will be in the future enabled by default, pretty sure. But if you don't see a video, make sure you enable it here and reload Safari. And same now for iOS within your settings, Safari, advanced experimental features, media recorder, you can toggle this on if it's not yet working inside your application. For Android, everything should be smooth as always, but for iOS, you might uh, at the time recording take this little extra step, but in the future, it should be enabled by default. And then even more in the future, I guess it will be just a general default for Safari. But we got video capturing working inside our iOS progressive web app. And if something works inside your iOS progressive web app, it will most likely also work inside Android. So I really hope, no, that's not the wrong. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this quick win on using the camera capturing functionality inside a progressive web app. Once again, if you want to use it on native device, simply add a according capacitor or Cordova plugin to capture videos the storage mechanism should be mostly the same to write a file and to read a file. That should just work fine, but the capturing might be different. Hopefully this helps you to build a great progressive web app. If you want to see more about uh, progressive web app functionalities, which we haven't talked too much about on this channel yet, let me know in the comments what you would like to see. And I'm happy to, be able to create more progressive web app content with Ionic. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and stay subscribed so you get notified about all the new tutorials, quick wins and other app development and web development videos on this channel. If you want to learn more about Ionic with in-depth courses, a community of like-minded developers so you can learn and build your apps faster, you should definitely check out the Ionic Academy, which is my code school to help you with everything Ionic with a huge library of courses, material and a supportive Slack channel so we can get your app out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you inside the next video. Have a great day and happy coding, Simon. <laughs>